I came to tell you there are people who are suffering from the UN anti-Israelis and even more than Israelis. I belong to one of those peoples. Please allow me, please hear me out. The exaggeration of Palestinians' sufferings by blaming a Jewish for it and the silence of the cry of those who suffer on the far largest scales. For 50 years, the indigenous black population of Sudan, Christians and Muslims alike, have been victims of brutal racist Arab Muslims regimes in Khartoum. In southern Sudan, my homelands, about four million innocent men, women, and children were slaughtered from 1955 to 2005. Seven million were ethnically cleansed, and they became the largest refugee groups since World War II. The UN is concerned about so-called, quote-unquote, Palestinian refugees. They dedicated a separate ag agents for them, and they treat them with a special privileges. Meanwhile, my people's ethnically cleansed murderers and slaves are literally ignored. Today, in the Nuba Mountains, genocide is taking place as I speak. The Islamic regime in Khartoum is targeting the black Africans, Muslims and Christians. Nobody in the United Nations told the truth about the Nubian peoples in the Nuba Mountains. Do you hear the UN's condemns Arab racism against Africa? That are pathetical questions. What you find on the page of the New York Times or in the records of the UN's condemnation is Israel racism or Israel crimes. The Palestinian sufferings. My people have been driven off from the front page because of the exaggerations about the Palestinian sufferings. What Israel does is being betrayed as a Western sin. But the truth is that the real sins happen when the Westerns abandon us with the Africans in Sudan. The victims of Arab Islamic apartheid. Khartoum declared jihad on my peoples, and this legitimized taking slavery as a tool, as a war boot. The Arab militia were sent to destroy southern Sudanese villages and were encouraged to take African women and children as slaves. We believe that up to 200,000 were kidnapped and brought to the northern Sudan and sold into the slavery. I am a living proof of these crimes against humanity. I don't like to talk about my experience as usual, but I do it because it is important for the world to know that the slavery exists today. I was nine years old when an Arab man by the name of Abdullah tricked me into the following, following him to the boat that going to the northern Sudan, where he gave me to his family as a gift. For three and a half years, there is slaves going through something that no child 
should ever gone through. Brutal beatings, demonization, working around the clocks, sleeping on the grounds with the animals, eating the family left over. During three and a half years, I was unable to say a word no. All I always say to everything is yes and yes to everything. The United Nations, which I call United Do Nothing Nations, knew about the enslavement of the Southern Sudanese by the Arabs, and their own staff reported it. It took UNICEF under the pressure from Jewish late American anti-slavery groups, and also led by one of my friends sitting among us today, Dr. Charles Jacob. Thank you very much. <laughs> 16 years to acknowledge what was happening. But the Sudanese government and the Arab leagues pressure UNICEF, and the UNICEF backtracks, and it started to criticize those who worked to liberate Sudanese slaves. In 1989, Dr. Gasbiro, a courageous Hungarian man, worked with the United Nations, a special rapporteur on the human rights in Sudan, who report the slavery resigned on a protest because the UN did nothing about his report. My friend, today tens of thousands black southern Sudanese are still serve their masters in the northern Sudan and UN is silent about that. It would often the OIC the Arab League, as a former slaves, a victims of worse sort of racism, allowed me to explain why I think calling Israel a racist state absolutely absurd. I have been to Israel five times, visiting Sudanese refugees. Let me tell you how they end up there. These Sudanese refugees flew Arab racism, hoping to find shelter in Egypt. They were wrong. When the Egyptian security forces slaughtered 26 black refugees in Cairo, who were protesting the Egyptian racism and Sudan, realizing that the Arab racism is the same, whether in Khartoum or Cairo. They need shelter, and where they find it? In Israel. Dodging the bullets from the Egyptian border patrols, walking for a very long distance, the refugees, the only hope was to reach to the Israeli side the fence where they will know that they will be safe. And indeed, they were safe. The blacks, Muslim from Darfur, choose Israel above all the Arab Muslim states of the area. Do you know what this means? Again, this is a pathetical question. The Arabs say Israel is racist. In Israel, the black Sudanese Christians and Muslims were welcomed and treated like human beings. Just to go, just go and ask them, like I have done. They told me that compared to the situation in Egypt, Israel is heaven to them. Israel is racist, another question, to me and to my peoples. The people who know racist, the answer is absolutely not. 
Israel is a state where people are colorly rainbow. Jews themselves came in the color. Even blacks I met with the Ethiopian Jews in Israel. Beautiful black Jews. I came here today to tell you the people who suffer the most from the UN's anti-Israel policy are not Israeli themselves, but all peoples who the UN ignore in order to tell big lie against Israel. <laughs> we the victims of the Arabs Muslims abuse, women's ethnically, ethnic minority, religious minority, homosexuals in Arab Islamic worlds who are biggest victims of the UN Israel hate because it, the UN will not tell you when the gay are being stoned to death in Iran except telling you about Israelis should not defend themselves when they are being attacked. Look at the situations of the Coptics in Egypt, the Christians in Iraq, Nigeria and Iran, Hindus who suffer from Islamic oppressions, Sikh. We, the rainbow coalitions of the victims, are the targets of jihad. All suffer and we all are being ignored. We are abundant so that the big lie against Jews can go forward. In 2005, I visit one of the refugee camps in southern Sudan, and I met 12 years old young little girls who told me about her dreams. In her dreams, she wanted to go to schools and become a doctor. And then she went to visit Israel. I was shocked, honestly. I asked her, how could this refugee girl who spent most of her life in the northern Sudan know when I asked why she want to tell me that these are our peoples. In July 9, 2011, Southern Sudan becomes an independent state. For Southern Sudanese, means the continuations of oppressions, brutalizations, demonizations, Islamization and Arabization and enslavements have to end. In a similar, the Arabs continue to deny the Jewish right of its sovereignty in their homelands and the Durban conference continuing to deny the legitimacy Israel's deny the the Israel legitimacy of coexist. As a friend to Israel, I bring you the news that my president, the president of the new nation of Southern Sudan, the president of the Republic of Southern Sudan, Salva Kiir Meyardit, publicly stated that the Southern Sudan Embassy or the Southern Sudanese Embassy will be built in Jerusalem.
not in Tel Aviv, again, but in Jerusalem. The internal capsules of the Jewish peoples. I also want to assure you that my own new nations, a nation of southern Sudan, and all of his peoples will oppose the racist forums like the Dovan Three Conference. We will oppose it by simply telling the truth, our truth. My friends, my Jewish friends taught me some things to say with you. I am a Israeli car. Thank you very much.